I want to do a new thing with with going live, by the way, Brad, which right, I should have yeah. talked to you before we started the show. No, that's fine. I, ju- I don't want to do the countdown anymore, um, where we talk for a little bit and then we're like, okay, are we starting the show? I just want to, whenever you deem it good, whether it's a minute into the show or 10 minutes in, do an intro. Okay, so you, you I mean... So is... you, could, you could do the intro right now, or we could just talk and shoot the shit for a while and do the intro. Whatever you feel is best, that, because I end up leaving in all this stuff before anyways. Half okay. the damn time. I just I I I think we did it that way just for the sake of editing, and you've got mm-hmm. a new editing process. Exactly. So. so don't really need to do it anymore. I also just like the silent three, two, one because it makes me feel like I'm on the set of something. Really I mean, you more could... important than what we are. Well, that's the thing is, you could just do that in the <laughs> middle of us talking. You just go three, and but we're still talking, and then you just randomly scream at us. <laughs> Oh, uh, I don't think I can randomly scream! Ah! <laughs> well, what was that? Uh, I don't was, know. Uh, it was a random scream! Okay, that's what you call that. Well, see, I can't do a real scream to, to show you what a scream is like because Roran's actually taking a nap for once during a fucking show. <laughs> I give it ten minutes. <laughs> uh, you know, he should be waking up in about ten minutes. That's literally when he should be waking up perfectly timing. He has a new, well, sh- new session schedule we set up specifically for Mondays, so he'd be asleep for the first 15 minutes of the podcast. I gotta pull up the doc. That might be a good I, I way. I have not added anything to it. There was something I was thinking about adding to it, and I didn't do it. I've just been busy, and I've just been, like... we So we took last week off. So let's talk about pancakes and what we've been doing. Pancakes? Sure, pancakes and what we've been doing. Okay, I mean, lastly, last... Welcome so- to Constantly Calibrating, <laughs> I'm your host, Brad. <laughs> With me this week, I have Justin and Josh. Uh, and Ryan is on a sabbatical leave. So uh, we're back after a week off, and uh, we're here to talk to you about what we've been doing and pancakes. <laughs> Apparently pancakes. Yeah, I don't know. I, well, I don't know if you remember. Sorry. I used to, I used to randomly add the word pancakes, and I just realized my camera's in the wrong place. I'm not even looking remotely at it. I used to add pancakes like randomly, in on every link we did for a while there, and then somebody convinced me I should be more professional. I like blueberry <laughs> pancakes. They're good. Pancakes are good. I mean, when it comes down to it, I'm more of a fr- French toast person. Ooh. They're, no, like there was a there was a poll. Like four different people posted these polls over the weekend, which was if you had to give up one, which would you give up? And it was it was pancakes, French toast, waffles, and um, what the fuck was the other one? I think I don't know what what the hell. I, I think it may have Biscuits? been like no, because it was something easy in that same line of thinking. What's- I, I can't toast regular toast. It, it may have just been. I think it may have just been buttered toast. And I looked at Breaks. that. I'm like, okay, I'll give up pancakes, waffles, and buttered toast. Give me my French toast. I have to eat French toast in moderation. We all do. E- either that, or or I just need some really good French toast. It really depends. I mean, French toast is one of those few breakfast foods I can eat near indefinitely, though I would say waffles is the easiest on the stomach. If you're going to eat really large amounts. What? Mickey waffles. Mickey what waffles is? are good. Mickey waffles. Oh, Mickey waffles. Mickey waffles are the shit. Mickey waffles are yes, great they are. because they're they're always overcooked and slightly stale, but in a good way. <laughs> no, but Not they the are. ones I had. Oh, my God. Really? They weren't like hard as a rock? No, oh my god, like, we, okay, so, uh, when we went to, when we went to Disney, we went to Ohana for the character breakfast, which is, uh, part of the Polynesian Resort, I think. Oh, you did uh, that? Yeah, yeah, and, uh, they saw, they saw the characters, and, uh, and, but, uh, it's a family style meal, and they gave us Mickey, Mickey waffles and Stitch waffles, and they were so good. They, they were, like, they weren't overdone, they weren't underdone, they were just the right amount of crisp and squish. Ooh. It was perfect. Mm. I'm impressed. Hey, dude, uh, next time you have a chance to go to Ohana for food, do it. It's one of the best restaurants on property. I God, so I mean, that obviously was there the last time I was at Disney mm. World, but I don't know of it. Uh, just Chris is making a con, uh, made a comment straight up French toast thuggin. <laughs> yep. I just, I don't even know what the hell that fucking means. I have no idea. Whoa. I just what? clicked into our chat to like, 
make sure I can click on it. And we have this massive chat rules list that I've never seen before. Oh, yeah. yeah. I, that too. I need to tweak that. Um, I just copied and pasted our actual rules. So on a fun note, we're actually going to have a bunch of new cool stuff, uh, panels and stuff appearing, I think, later in the week. Uh, our friend Lauren uh, of Lauren Walsh Art just finished all of our stuff. So when that finishes, I will be updating the rules list, which also I'm going to update the one for the chat as well. Cool. Ugh. Ugh. So as far as what I've been up to, I mean, I we didn't have the podcast last week because my wife was extremely sick. Um, Brad, I believe you were sick, correct? Yeah. Uh, Ryan was on a sabbatical, and huh. Justin was actually available. Yeah. Like that—that that was pretty Sounds much. Right. Yep, yep. <laughs> that was pretty much it. We were just like, you know, we're not going to make Justin do an entire podcast by himself. I mean, I could try, but tempted, but all right. Nobody uh, wants that. Not particularly so, now. So we were supposed to talk about other stuff, but like, uh, have have we done anything that we want to talk about before we jump into our old documents? <laughs> yeah, we're still like we have a couple of topics that are like four weeks old, just because we have not had the right people on the show since then. Um, yeah, I, I mean, all I've been doing this week, uh, weekend is, in my free time, I've been playing um, uh, a review copy of uh, West of Loathing, which I don't know if either one of you ever played Kingdom of Loathing. No, it's... Like, mm. the, the title sounds interesting, though. Yeah, Kingdom of Loathing was like an old browser-based game. It was like the f- first game Charnel ever introduced me to when we started dating. Just very comedic, your stick figure, stuff like that. They made um, an RPG game, and it is <laughs> and it is it's, it's just this interesting game because the mechanics are pretty simplistic the rpg aspects play some pretty simplistic but the comedy and the writing is amazing like oh my god is probably one of the single funniest games i have ever fucking played in my entire life i was playing it up until about 10 i almost forgot to call you guys on skype because i was so into it and you that's, know that doesn't that's happen that's a good to me. thing though that's a that, good thing that rarely Great happens thing. to me so I think I'm so the game comes out on Thursday the tenth. I'm allowed to start streaming it on Wednesday morning. I may stream it Wednesday. I I don't know yet because I don't know if I necessarily want to replay it. But I'm mm-hmm. definitely going to uh, have some sort of review written or video up on Thursday. Cool. And um, yeah, that's really like my major ship. Uh, I'm trying to think if I've done anything in major. Uh. N- I played a little bit of Splatoon. I've been playing a little bit of Fortnite every day. Sometimes just like logging in to get my bonuses, but logging in them forts. Yeah, I don't, it's, it's I don't know how I feel about Fortnite. Did you actually pick it up? I did pick it up. Like, okay, so what sense do you not know how you feel about it? I I don't know if I like it. <laughs> it's it, weird. It it's I like it. I feel like the to be honest, I don't I don't want to. I don't want to jade your perception of it before you play it, Josh, but um, I feel like there's almost too much loot. Almost. That's what a lot of people and, say. Like That's um, been the number one complaint I've read. There should be more emphasis on building the forts. And maybe there is later on, but like early on you can just put up some wooden walls and go stand outside them and kill everything. And they don't even get close. You don't have to trap or anything. But I'm mm. still in the early phases. I'm still in... Like, there's four major sections of the game. I'm still in the first section. Hmm. So, maybe it gets tougher. It seems like it will. Um, I I like that there's a lot of things to do as far as upgrading and collecting. But there's just... There's almost too much to upgrade. There's not almost. There is too much. Yeah. Like, there's so much in this game. I in feel the, like um, they, they could Upgrade system, they, skill systems. Just... Mm. They could have done without the gray tier of items entirely. It's just too much. There's no point in it. Um, and the backpack sizes feel um, what's just just too small, really, with the amount of loot there is. Honestly, but we'll get you in there soon enough, and we'll we'll do a live stream maybe soon. I That's really want to check it out. So. Yeah. I really want to see what a group stuff is. I want to see. I know I've watched Cut Right and a few other people stream it, and it's and they're way further along. Oh, it seems like way. it's. It seems like the Ford stuff actually does 
come into play as a mechanic far more. But it does, from what I little I saw, I, th I think you streamed very briefly, and what I've seen of a few people around that level, it does seem like the early stuff is kind of not quite face roll level, but it is very simple to introduce it, you. Yeah, it it doesn't teach you a lot. Mm. I feel like it, it, it needs to have something different about how it, it it progresses you into the game but um i don't know it's still considered early access which is funny because there's retail copies for uh ps4 and xbox one which makes no sense to me how this is retail no. ready if it's early access that's confusing game yeah, terminology gold God. <laughs> game terminology's lost all meaning yeah it really has betas aren't betas early access is full release so. There was a time when a beta was something that was a privilege of something you got into that you worked your ass to get into, and you had to show like developers and publishers and companies that you were th this great person. Now betas are really just glorified stress tests. That no, beta's that, just one point of the game. Yeah, and it's mm -hmm. again, yeah, it's literally it's one point oh. That is what it is, and you're just stress testing. Nothing so. gets changed, or rarely gets changed. So other than that, I actually got to see Justin this week, and he brought me my shirt. I did. Oh yeah. So thank you again, and thank you to Ryan, I believe, for purchasing it. Mm -hmm. I, I think that's how that went down. Ryan yeah, purchased it, it and left it in the hotel room. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I I was telling Justin, uh, it I'm I'm used to him leaving things in places. He left a our we bought guild shirts when we went to BlizzCon a couple years ago. He left his in the Uber, so mm. didn't surprise me. That sounds about right. But uh, how about you, Justin? You been doing anything interesting? No, nothing interesting. Uh, <laughs> moving around again. Uh, having car problems. Like if it's not a, my battery dying, it's a rock oh, hitting the windshield. Yeah, yeah, I saw that. That sucks. I totally spaced on car problems. I'll, Justin, you talk about anything more <laughs> of yours, and then <laughs> I can talk a bigger about my problem. No, but like, like I hit my too. windshield. Where it's just like a little like X across it. I'm like, ooh, pushed it. It's like, I'm like, oh, you pushed it. You did it yourself. I put I put a little pressure on it, just a little That's bit. All it like takes I thought, in this heat, dude. Yeah, so I thought like I want to make sure it didn't come like all the way through. That I could fill it on this side, and it's like boom, all the way across my windshield. I'm like, oh, I'm trying to see if I can show off your windshield. Oh, <laughs> uh, it's worse <laughs> than that now. Is yeah. it spider webbing everywhere? What's that? Is it spider webbing everywhere else? No, not yet. So it's still just the one crack. No, like um. Like, when it hit, like, cracked into an X, or not quite an X, like, it's one down, two across. When I pushed it, like, it went all the way across my windshield, almost like a circle. And then, um, where that one low cross at, that grew overnight, so, uh, yep. it needs to get replaced soon. Yep. Mm. You need to find somebody who'll come do that with you at work. Oh, no, uh, I already got a plan. <laughs> Good. Good. Like it's set. It's there. Um, I told my supervisor about it, so let's see if he remembers. Um, basically, he says, "Come on in, park it at the place. Uh, you'll use a van that day." I'm like, "All right." Let's see if you actually remember that. Well, you know that's nice. I think. All right. Yeah, it's I good. Think I got it up. There we go. Because it's better. My alternative. I was actually thinking about. It's like, oh crap! I want to leave work to come here to get it repaired, but no, nah, that's a better solution. That way I don't have to miss out on the work or anything like that. <sighs> but no, it's, it's situated. I got an, I was an adult about it. I need an adult. I need an adult. Adults are needed, Dude. so... Geico so, I, man, that thing is nice. I'm just gonna put that out there. Good job, Geico. <laughs> so, um, I also got into some car-related kajiggering as well. Jiggering. Yes, yeah, so um my car Wednesday night, you know, the uh the sensor thing that went off to be like, hey, you might want to look into your tire. So I brought the I was I had an appointment to go in Friday uh, afternoon it was the earliest time I can go in. I went to bring the car in. I'm about thirty feet from the exit I need to get off on to go to the dealership to get my tire repaired, when I hear this little clunk clunk tick sound. I'm in the right. I'm I'm in the second to second lane from the right, and I thought, okay, I need to uh, I need to 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 look into this. So I immediately then uh, 
swerved essentially off into the uh across the right lane and into the what is it called into the shoulder and rising about the crossing the shoulder i hear just this pop 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 sound and my car just starts shuddering like fucking crazy Ooh. and yeah this is what happened for anyone wondering uh my tire ripped clean off this isn't even how bad it was at, at its peak for anyone who uh, is watching the video podcast it was ridiculous and i had to wait two hours on the side of the road because i don't know how to change um to a spare not that i could have used it the spare uh couldn't be used for the front anyways i wait two hours for a tow truck because the tow truck dispatch gave the people the wrong address or location for where i was at so the guy drove 20 minutes in the wrong direction uh and then i drive back in rush hour traffic and yeah again i could have walked to the dealership in 30 minutes i i i feel like i need to come teach you how to change a tire yeah <laughs> i'll do that i'll do that during our trip well, Don't worry. I got I, you. <laughs> I mean, I can explain it like right now. You find the jack, you spin it, and after you're putting it in the right place, there is a right place. If it's different on every car, you just have to know that. And then Wait. you undo the bolts. Okay, okay so they Dodge right now. Or stomping on them. So, what Dodge does right now, you don't get a spare tire. You just get a air pump in the back of your car, which is fucking useless if the tire bursts out. Okay, so here's the thing. Um, I. Used to know how to change a tire, and then on my old car, uh, I guess two cars ago, I had a BMW, and I went to change the tire because it had an issue, and I used the BMW specialty made jack. The jack, I guess, was missing a small piece of it, so when I put it on in the proper spot, it ended up just puncturing two gigantic holes in the side of the car, and in my panic... It still held the car up, but in my panic, I still was like, okay, I'll still change the tire. When I went to change the tire, I fucked something up. And um, I stripped two different things, and then the uh, and then almost tipped the car onto myself. Oh, God. It's me. Yeah. Hi, <laughs> it's your friendly oh, neighborhood gosh. idiot. So yeah, I've just never touched him. But again, um, the tire I had was not regulated to be in the front, anyways. Hmm. So for that short a drive, it probably would have worked. But yeah, I'm not a person who takes those kind of risks. So, anyways, that was yeah, that was my weekend, and then thankfully the people at uh, Tempe Honda. I'm, I rarely shout out things, but and I certainly usually shout out them because they're usually jackasses and idiots. But uh, they felt so bad about the situation that they pushed me to the top of the list, got my tire repaired and re- well replaced in 30 minutes, and so I was in and out. And since I uh, and since I have Honda Care, I didn't pay for the tow or the tire, which by the way this is now my second tire replacement in a month. I got my tire replaced, my driver's side. Uh, rear was replaced on July 5th of, uh, on July 5th, and then my, uh, driver's side front was replaced on August 5th. Do you tell him just get to the chase and go ahead and replace the other one before we get to that? Yeah, no, I'm bringing the car in for its oil change, and I need, actually, the alignment's really off, so I'm gonna have them look at a bunch of different shit, because if I'm driving to Vegas, actually, we're not yes, gonna- Yes, please check that before we well, drive Well, we're not Vegas. driving that car to Vegas, so we're, we're, we're taking Charnel's car. car. Dude. Yeah. I'll, on a fun note, uh, we haven't had a podcast since Justin and I got confirmed for media passes for, uh, for uh, the GameStop Expo. Yeah. So we're he's gonna fly out here. We're gonna drive up to Vegas. Uh, Saturday we drive up Saturday, go to the event Sunday, drive back Monday, and then the following Thursday we fly to Seattle because we got confirmed for PAX West for media. Whoop. So uh, Justin and I might be doing a lot of content creation in that intervening week, and we're gonna do, going to a couple different events. So yay! Yeah, that's the ideal like use of our time. That is the is that ideal gonna actually happen. Deal plan. Mm-hmm. Whether it'll actually happen is a whole other question. But you know, I have supplies now, so we fucking better. <laughs> I'm just gonna send a bottle of Fireball with Justin and ruin everything. We could do that. We could do that. <laughs> That that is that isn't uh, it's not a good option, but it's an option. Uh, I don't know if you would get it through the airport. If it's sealed, I'm sorry. What if it if it's sealed and you uh, he checks his luggage? Oh yeah, you'd have to put it in the luggage. Yeah, but he, as long as uh, you can't bring it through. Um, look, I have family members who used to travel when it was way less legal. He used to travel with insane amounts of pot. And other assorted drugs. I'm really not that worried about Fireball <laughs> getting through. So, um, cool. Yeah, I've I've got some minor car trouble. I've just got to figure out what's wrong with the freaking door. Like, 
the van door on the left side doesn't want to auto open anymore. I don't know what happened, so that's fun. Um, but uh, let's let's move on to our dock and uh, we have a dock. <laughs> yeah, yeah, come yeah. to talk about what we meant to talk about for weeks on end. Uh, this is at least two weeks old, so uh, the carried spi- over even longer. The fucking Spider Man shit was a viable option on the RTX podcast. <laughs> so well, um, this is a month old. Some of this shit. <laughs> so I, I liked Spider Man. It was a good movie. Um, oh yeah, we we're gonna spoil Spider. It's a month old. You better have seen it at this point. Uh, if probably. you care, if you care, if you if have, you don't care. care, then who cares? Um. If, if you, I'm yeah, really yeah, buzzed. <laughs> Josh's tolerance it's entertaining. It's probably more so Here, than anything else right now. No, no, here's the thing right now. My tolerance is when I was discussing this with people. My tolerance, I never know where it's going to fall out. Like, I could drink one of these and get completely and utterly so buzzed that I'm slurring my words. But I could have another three of these and be completely and utterly unfazed moving forward from that point on. Like, it takes me nothing to get to a buzzed, incomprehensible point, but then I don't really hit drunk. Hmm. So, so, yeah. Spider-Man! <laughs> Spider-Man! <laughs> Spider-Man and booze. Um, yeah, and Lady Ashland's saying she was she really enjoyed it. And um, yeah, uh, she's one of the people whose fault it is that I'm drinking during the show. I, I did like it. Um, it felt off to me. And I, I still, I, I had this conversation with another one of my friends who absolutely loves Spider Man, um, and I, I couldn't put my finger on why I felt it felt off. It's like maybe, maybe I was waiting for some epic moment to happen, and it just didn't. Maybe I've been hmm. trained to expect that from the other five films, hmm. and this was such a more down to earth like Spider Man movie that we just didn't get it i mean there was the there was the fight at the end with vulture which was kind of okay uh it it felt short and a little predictable that's what i loved about it see i i I was unsure of the vulture fight the first time i watched the movie i was like well that kind of felt a little anticlimactic that didn't make a lot of sense to me but then on the second viewing i decided no it made perfect sense peter is not spider-man like this super super duper powered he is still a fucking kid and there is n- the the peter parker that we've seen in civil war and spider-man homecoming at that point logically should not have been able to defeat that tough of a villain so it made perfect sense that the villain defeated himself that peter just got the shit kicked out of him and was just a hero like that was the whole point of the fight mm-hmm. and then of course he was in way over his head but the point was he had heart yeah, and, and yeah, I will say that the, the whole like as as much as I should be used to like little plot twists by now, like Liz's dad thing that actually caught me off guard. I I I don't know why I wasn't in the right mindset to pick up that, but it it actually caught me off guard. I saw it coming in the sense of I thought to myself I should whisper to Charnel, hey, wouldn't it be weird if they made the vulture like Liz's dad or something like that? And I thought, no, that's even dumb by my standards. And there it is. And but, she would have punched you if it had been true, but, probably. <laughs> but it made sense. Now I wish I. She is so used to me spoiling movies that we haven't seen during the movie that I doubt she ever fucking listens to me when we're in a film anymore. She's like, uh huh, shut up. Yeah, no, she. you think I get that much attention? Like, that's an impressive level of attention. No, it's literally, she just sits there and she's just, and, and at best, she'll give me a, like, a, you know, a, a pat on the leg or something like that, just to acknowledge that she's not paying attention. Um, but, you know, so, I mean, Justin's been to movies with me as well, where I just whisper stupid shit. I'm really trying hard now, too. That was actually the fun part about seeing Spider-Man and the Alamo. Um, one, people are too far away to whisper to them. Two, you get thrown out for doing that. So it's like I had to just sit there and be like, "Do do do." I have and you had thoughts already on the seen movie. it. At that I point. yeah I, I I with with the people I love and care about, I like to offer tidbits. I can't I can't help myself. I'm I'm trying to be better as I get older because I hate when people do that to me. So, um, I'm I'm kind of glad that Liz is resolved because she's an okay character, but I she just didn't do it for me. No, she was perfectly cromulent. She was fine, but um. Well, you know, decently acted, decent character, decent 
set up for relationships and things like that. But no, that's that's not so, what I wanted to see. So the the big question I really have coming out of it is: Do we actually think that she's MJ at the end? And I'm 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 blanking on what they're calling her. She's Melissa uh, Michelle. Michelle, do you do we actually think that she's MJ or she's MJ? Is that she's just a joke. She's MJ. She's not, but she's not Mary Jane. I don't. I exactly. legitimately don't believe there will be a Mary Jane. I think we're gonna have Michelle. Hmm. Um, I, I, I think that's what we're gonna end up with, and I think that I like the character. And at this point, with how many times we've seen a lot of these characters, uh, changing it up like that actually would work fine for me. I just don't want them to do a thing where they have Michelle come back in the next movie as the romantic interest. And as the marriage and replacement, as it were, and do that whole thing, and then, then the, to then decide, oh wait, no, what there is actually marriage in. I want them either to go all in on Michelle as the love interest, or right very early on in the next movie, it's not the case. Like mm. they just need to make a decision and stick to it. I don't want the Michelle for one or two movies, and then oh, here comes Mary Jane. If they don't, if Michelle is not the love interest moving forward, then bring Gwen Stacy in instead. You know what I mean? Or an equivalent of that. Or Cindy, who was actually in the movie. She was in the movie, which is... Well, I mean, I guess, I guess that does make sense to the lore, because in the comics, when, she, when Silk was introduced, she talks about being in high school with Peter, and then she gets, mm-hmm. then she disappears. So that actually does make sense can, uh, canonically. Not that canon really matters that much. The best part about this movie is something that uh, Lady Ashlyn in our chat makes a comment. She wrote, it had the humor and heart that I felt was missing in other movies. I've been saying this for fucking ever. I felt that um, that the the Sam Raimi movies, uh, Tobey Maguire was a great Peter Parker, an awful, awful Spider-Man, never really had a lot of humor to him. I never was really a fan. That's why I actually love the third movie, because they just dive so hard into camp. That's what Justin and I talked about, that it's just, it, it, it they just gave up, and I actually really appreciate that. Um, I love Andrew, Gar- Andrew Garfield to the point that I was really upset about them changing, and I love The Amazing Spider-Man, both of them. In fact, but he made a great Spidey with some great wit, but he was a fucking awful Peter Parker. Uh, I I stand by, and neither movie, both movies have <laughs> acceptable humor, and but neither one had you know that heart that um, the Sam Raimi ones kind of did, but they, they they didn't have that thing. This I felt for Peter. Like my favorite thing watching the movie the first time, I missed a whole chunk of the film. Charnel knows. Obviously, Peter's going to survive at least this first movie, right? Like, she, she's a smart, intelligent movie watcher. She knows he's going to survive. We know he's in Infinity War. She keeps up with news and stuff like that. But my God, when he, when um, Vulture's doing the whole thing where Peter gets buried and that whole entire sequence happens and he gets buried, she literally had her knees to her chest from that point forward. Actually, no, sorry. She had her knees going forward from the ele- from the elevator collapse scene moving forward. By that scene, she was, like, tucked into her knees, and she was just like rock my core because she felt so strongly for this version of Peter. I've never seen her respond. And she, cause Spider-Man's her second favorite hero. Hmm. So, but she like just was so invested in the character and she was talking about it forever. And I think that's emblematic of the heart. This version and this character showed. It's also, I think in the top three funniest fucking uh, Marvel cinematic movies ever made with, it it, I, uh, it yeah. was borderline the painful comedy that I almost don't like sometimes. Yeah, like mm. yeah, like uh, Ben Stiller. Really? I mean, I hate Ben I, Stiller with a passion, but I, I didn't. I, I, I don't didn't get hate this. him, but I don't like his movies because all of his movies are that painful comedy where you're waiting for something good to happen. And it's just bad shit keeps happening to this dude, and. It, it it was like borderline there, like it, it, the the scene where he got locked into the into the room, um, the the warehouse. It's like uh, mm, no, it was one it of those good. scenes. It was, it was good, but it was it, like, oh, did you really have to get him locked in there? It was to establish his relationship with uh, with Karen. Oh, I mean, that's essentially yeah. what it was supposed to do. Um. It was a little rough around the edges. It wasn't perfect, uh, that, that scene, but it, it, it kept it within that realm. I will say, watching it the second time, that scene did make did drag a little bit for my taste, but it, it was it was overall, I, I think, a worth it scene. But I, I can see what you're talking about with that one. 
Yeah, it's just I and I think you know what now that now that I've said it it's that we're used to a Spider-Man who knows what he's doing. Mhm. Yes. Even Andrew Garfield knew what he was doing. Even Tobey Maguire's at the start knew he was doing. This was a Spider-Man who was a fucking I-, I mean, he was a smart guy, but he was an idiot teenager. He's really like struggling to figure it out the whole time. Yeah. Mhm. This Even so th- like he still like screws up when he tries to web swing. Oh yeah, like he makes constant mistakes. I mean, the fact that well, that that face plant pretty early in the movie in the construction yard. Um but like my favorite part uh, kind of about this yeah was he was just a, a, a constant fuck up uh, at a lot of points and my favorite aspect of that was the fact that I feel like this is the most accurate representation of teenagers as I understand teenagers that I've seen in any film not just a, a, like a Marvel or a superhero in literally any film in a very long time like this didn't feel like 30 somethings you know playing teenagers this even knowing the ages of some of the actors I felt like they were all teenagers and I felt like they were in high school right I thought that was phenomenal. I I I love that aspect. It just just for that alone, it's it's top notch for me. Yeah, I'm I'm looking forward to more of it. But um, I think I needed this to to be okay with it. Honestly, like this this talk makes me like the film more. Like I was a little, I didn't hate it, but I was unsure about it. Yeah. So. I- I get that. I was just, I was just madly in love with it from the first get go, and just like obsessively waiting to talk about this ever since. <laughs> I see. That. Oh, I can't tell. <laughs> <laughs> no, you shut don't up, me. Um. So yeah, I'm, I'm ready to see what they do next. Um. I they've, I... they've, they've set up for a lot of options. They've set up a lot of things. There's a lot of different directions it could go. Um. So okay. Leigh Ashlands feel asking us, how do we feel about the change in Flash Thompson? So, so it's so, fine. It makes more sense with the modern. So, um, I could give two shits. My, my, okay, so getting to a hot button issue, I don't care about race changing a character, whether it's a, a, a black character to a white character, a white person to an Indian person, uh, or, or, uh, a white person to a Hispanic person, or any fucking variation. I don't care about that. If it because it. Unless it's something that's important to the character, you change Black Panther to a white guy, I'm going to be bothered because part of Black Panther is his African heritage. It, it 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 makes no fucking sense for him to be a white guy. Flash Thompson was never about being a white guy. There yeah, was he, he was about being a bully. He was a bully yeah. and a jock. Um, so now Flash Thompson being this kind of you know uh, debate guy, but kind of a cyber bully kind of style thing, a more modern uh, social media based bully. I, I think it works with the times. I think it makes a lot it more sense. Um, I curious if they're going to continue him forward to be like towards an agent venom storyline. I mean, with the Sony deal, who the fuck knows if that's even a viable option, but I mean, if they do that direction, then his, his size doesn't particularly matter. Uh, I'll be right back. So, but in other words, I, I like him for the most part is all I'm saying. Okay. Now she's saying, at, uh, change. she's saying in chat, the biggest beat everyone had about it around the internet is him being, a different type of bully. Well, that it doesn't really matter. I think is what we need to establish here. Is because That's the thing, like the old high school bullies shoving people in lockers, just doesn't work anymore. It. Do- I mean, honestly, it doesn't exist anymore, as far as I know. I mean, it didn't even exist for us. The lockers were one. The lockers were too small in my high school. Um, and you know, there were still jocks, but they didn't go around pushing people around. They just kind of kept to themselves. I mean, I I feel like I had a stereotypical click high school and I'm that there were bullies but they were the rednecks where I was so <laughs> same yeah I, I appreciate the different take on it. I appreciate uh, just for take that it's proper for our times I think yeah yeah it, I mean with them just updating it and making it current it works it really does so um I don't know. I'm I'm excited to see more. I was dis. I will say I was disappointed to not see Gwen, but you can easily bring her in into part two, just as a transfer student to replace uh, Liz if you need to. So I mean, they could bring in just about any character without yeah, yeah, really yeah, any yeah. difficulty. Like, I mean, hey, I'm a new student. Done. Oh, or literally, I mean, if they want to bring in someone, what are you saying, Gwen? As I get back, uh, they want to bring back bring Gwen, and they could literally just be like. Hey, I haven't seen you in a while, Pete. Boom. She's like she's just always been there. We just I didn't she just wasn't Which important is to the movie. Kind of how they're doing it. Um, That's how they're I doing mean, a lot of things. 
You know, you know what though? I I'm actually the most excited to see how they proceed after the final scene. So that's the thing. Like that's okay. So that's one of my favorite fucking things. It's just him putting the outfit, and then Aunt May. What the? And it's one of the funniest fucking things. I really want. So that's the big thing. A lot of people are complaining about the changes to Flash. People are complaining about um uh changes to some timeline kind of stuff. Changes some characters. Changes all these kind of things. And not, but here's the thing: almost everyone seems to love the Aunt May thing, which is like one of the biggest things of Peter is that Aunt May it's, doesn't know. It's a huge change because it's, yeah. that's a massive, when, monstrous when, change. When has Peter one ever had Aunt May know um, that early in his career? Never. And two, when has she been that young? Never. No, so I mean, it's, uh, <laughs> well, I mean, what's how, how Aunt May is supposed to be in her late? I want to say mid mid to late fifties in the Ultimate Universe. Which is, I, I feel like that's where she was supposed to roughly, because they, the take on that in the Ultimate Universe was it was supposed to be this younger, hipper Aunt May. She wasn't this, you know, this geriatric person that we grew up with, like the 90s cartoon. Um, I don't know if she was, I feel like she was mid to late 50s. So that, that makes sense, because what, uh, Marissa Tomei is 52, 53, I want to say. Really? I believe so. Give me a second. Uh wow. Literally, if you type versus Tomei age is the first thing that pops up. She is 52 years old. 53 this year. So. Yeah, it matched Ultimate Spider-Man. And, um, yes, I think they are absolutely going the Sinister Six route. There's, yes. There's plenty of, uh, well, there's well, plenty of stuff in there to, to allude to it. Other than all my, all my fucking favorite villains, except for two, were in this frickin' movie, pretty much. We had we had Vulture, who I've loved Vulture since I was a kid. We had Scorpion in this, who I love. We had which God let me tell you, the the first time I, I heard Matt Gargan's name, I almost launched out of my freaking seat. I was so excited. <laughs> um we had Shocker in it. I'm still confused which for, you know, Shocker died. I guess um Herman <laughs> Schultz is the one that died, is, is my understanding, the the one I actually know of. Um, there was a, supposedly a, a illusions to uh, Mysterio in this movie, and Doc Ock were both oh. it's like super tiny, it, it, tiny things. Like I guess the, a, a theater that Mysterio is known to play at. As as campy oh. and weird as Mysterio is, I think I would like to see him used. He's my he's my favorite villain right after Electro, and I'm with uh, Lady Ashlyn here. Uh, Craven is another one up there that I would kill to see. So the question right now is what the problem with Spider Man that we have to deal with is the legalities of Spider Man because mm-hmm. we know that Sony is. Uh, Justin and I discussed this a couple of weeks ago. Uh, we know that Sony's developing a Silver and Black or Black and Silver. I can't fucking remember the name, and I don't care to. It's a Silver Sable Black Cat film. Yeah. Um, that has nothing to do with Spidey, but it's Spidey characters. We know they're developing a Venom movie starring Tom Hardy, which I will never forgive them for if, if Tom Hardy and Tom Holland don't come face to face, because those are now my two perfect castings for those characters. Um, and what is it? Then there's um, the rumor that they're still obsessed with doing a Sinister Six movie, even though now that Marvel has name checked all these characters, who the hell gets to use those rights? I'm so confused. I, I don't yep. know. So there's like so many questions, but if they could do a Sinister Six movie, I'd be so excited. I want them. I don't want a Sinister Six movie to be the next Spider-Man, the Spider-Man Homecoming sequel coming in like fucking was 2019. I don't want that to be the next one. I want them to continue setting up <laughs> Spidey villains, um, even if they're only getting like mini appearances. So we get that. I just don't want them doing what Sony was going to do with the Amazing Spider-Man 3 and just dive hardcore into it. I would prefer the that Sinister Six is its own movie that focuses on the villains. I mean, a, a, a proper version of Suicide Squad style film would be lovely. Because yeah, that's, I mean, I mean, that's kind of thing. Not heroes, obviously, but yeah. <sighs> I don't know. There's there's a lot of options, and I'm a lot of confusion in my opinion about what they could possibly do with Spidey and what they could do with uh with his universe. All I know is from everything I've read, I guess the Spider-Man storyline, they're considering, I guess Spidey is such a huge, important role in an Infinity War that they're considering it spy- the Spider-Man 1.5 almost. It's mm-hmm. like, it's like I, I guess his story, it's not going to be like a, a Vengeance stuff, which is kind of like everyone's story converges. I guess him, Doctor Strange, and a couple of other characters are going to get like huge things to their storylines. Like, some... 
I don't know why you would, but you could skip over the Avengers movies and not lose some storyline stuff for some characters. You could mm-hmm. skip some of the big major meetup movies and not, and just only watch the solo fairs and you'd be mostly fine. Like, I feel like you could watch Iron Man 3 without seeing the Avengers and you, they explain enough about Tony's P, uh, PTSD that it makes sense. But I guess they're saying that with Spidey, you kind of need to see Infinity War to truly fucking understand because they're going to do a lot of major stuff to his character. That's reports I've been reading. Yeah. And yeah, as Lady Ashton said, he's leading the next generation of MCU movies. Which is nice to see that they actually have plans. Because the big rumor right now is, which could just be a red herring, is Infinity War that we're going to have Captain America die because that's kind of been a given with Chris Evans' contract and a lot of other things that Tony Stark's going to be irrevocably crippled either physically or mentally uh, due to something in the film. And then the what I would like to see is I want to see uh, Carol Danvers in, in, in Avengers 4 be the new leader of the Avengers with Spidey as like a second-in-command almost kind of character, mm-hmm. jumping that storyline a little bit forward. Yeah. But, just yeah. ideas that uh, Christina and I spent an absurd amount of time discussing <laughs> Marvel stuff this weekend <laughs> because I'm I really want to do uh, well one I want to do a marathon of all the MC, MCU movies oh my god that would take a whole weekend where whole weekend I have a kid I have a kid dude that's a whole month <laughs> like the way we watch movies no but leading up to Black Panther we're gonna watch all uh, by that point 17 films and then uh, somewhere in there, I think, I don't know when I want to do it, but I want us on the podcast Wait. to rank the Marvel are movies. You, or are you not including the Incredible Hulk? I, of course, including it. <laughs> okay, just making sure. No, I, I don't think, I, I think it's an overall pretty good movie. Stuff from that movie is included um, in the storyline of other films. I mean, um, yeah, the general. The general comes no, back. Yep. Well, they even reference in Avengers, um, uh, uh, Black Widow references part of the movie and the Hulk's first appearance. Um, Incredible Hulk was a perfectly enjoyable film. It was not great. What I've always said is after Incredible Hulk and Iron Man 2, I've always been in a state of shock that the Marvel Cinematic Universe even continued because Incredible Hulk didn't do that well. Um, it kind of almost had a cult classic feel in Iron Man 2. I know there are people who like it, but they're wrong. Uh <laughs> <laughs> I I think it's in the top five worst films ever created. Um, and again, for Lady Ashley to make a comment, the new Thor movie looks amazing, except I would prefer Planet Hulk being its own movie. Blame Universal. It's it's entirely Universal's, Universal's fault. Uh, Mark Ruffalo has stated that they are not allowed to make solo Hulk movies. Uh, but apparently the Hulk is going to be a major component, starting with Thor, moving into Infinity War. He's going to be apparently a major component in like... 80% of the films coming out, moving Infinity War onward. So they're essentially going to be giving us Hulk movies as part of every fucking other yeah. film. I'm actually super excited about that movie, not just because of how awesome in 80s it looks, but because I just watched Doctor Strange last week and found out he was going to be in it, and I haven't seen him in any of the teasers yet. Um, I don't know. I mean, Doctor Strange is supposed to be a huge component of... Uh... I don't know. There's a lot. I'm a little buzz, so I missed half of what you said. <laughs> I like Benedict Cumberbund. He's going to be in Thor Ragnarok. I don't think so. He is. Is he? Yes. Okay. You, I don't know for how much, Did you watch the Stinger much, at the end of Doctor Strange? I watched the Stinger, but that doesn't necessarily mean he's going to be in it. Oh, no, because I have a film they'll do the same thing they did with Civil War, where they show the Stinger, and the Stinger is actually part of the movie. Uh, that's well. It was it was the Stinger for Civil War. That's possible. Uh, for Sonaldo the Huckage, uh, to what level should I calibrate my expectations for the Justice League movie? No pun intended. Maybe I did. Anyways, um, <laughs> I'm excited. Yeah, we I, we have, Justin and I did a lengthy discussion about Justice League for our San Diego Comic Con episode, which I will link in chat in case you want to go back and listen to that. It's actually a really good podcast. But um, as far as that episode, or as far as that goes, um, I'm actually pretty hopeful for it. I think they're leaning heavily, just for a short thing, they're leaning heavily in on Wonder Woman. They're leaning heavily in on Aquaman um, and with a little note tossed to Flash. And I think that's going to help them uh, on those 
well, one, Wonder Woman is such a beloved movie now, and then Aquaman being now a beloved, people really want to see Jason Momoa's take. I think that's going to help it do well. And I think I, I think DC, Warner Brothers is starting to actually get their head out of their ass a little bit with Wonder Woman. Anyways, I, there's the link for chat. I, I just want to see who they're going to use for Green Lantern. I really We're hope all wondering that. God, I really hope DC doesn't. I hope if they announce casting for Green Lantern, they say literally uh, X person's playing Green Lantern, and we don't know who it is. I mean, obviously, I guess obviously if they choose a black guy, it's going to be John Stewart. But <laughs> I don't feel like they're gonna they're gonna stray too much what? there. Obviously, but what I, if what they, they pull use... something unexpected and they use the big pink dude? Uh, I don't even know that. I literally, I know Guy Gardner, Hal Jordan, and John Stewart, and I've and I've ne- the only Green Lantern stuff I've ever fucking seen now in my entire life was the episode where I guess it's Guy Gardner appears in Superman the Animated Series. I've never read or seen anything really Green Lantern other than that in my entire life. <laughs> oh, I guess actually he does appear once or twice in Young Justice, so I've seen that as well. No. Yeah. Oh no, it's Kyle Ryan. Yeah, that's that's who appears in, in Superman. I can't remember his name. There's there's a lot of lanterns. But there's a lot of the, the, those are like the four main Earth the, Green the Lanterns. Pink, the pink dude like is the the main cameo alien. Okay, pink green lantern. I'm I'm looking it up because I'm just he's a big pink skin. In that mood. What's it? Hmm. What? What? What'd you say, Justin? Oh no! So it's like you're just not type of mood. Yeah, something. He's in that type of mood. Um, <clears throat> now I want to know pink. Oh, I'm looking him up. I can't find everybody. Him. Look it up. I found the picture of Jasmine from Aladdin in a in a pink lantern suit. So okay, uh, that's uh, not helpful at all. Anyways, oh, apparently he's technically primarily yellow. Wait, are you thinking? Why does it sound like I don't know? Anyways, he's I didn't really see big dude. I can't remember his name. That works fine. Oh, are you talking about? Wait, are you talking about Sinestro? I was no, about to say it's not Sinestro. You're not talking about Sinestro. Okay, that's because that's all I was thinking of there. Um, I don't know. So without moving too far sideways, yeah. Final thoughts about Spidey, just to tie this up, is I want more. Yes. Uh, yeah, I, exactly. I, I don't care what what way they bring him in. I don't care what way, what how. I just like the character. Uh, Lady Ashton saying, "Oh, the big orc dude." Yeah, he's like a big pink orc. Is he a pork? And dead <laughs> silence from the audience. <laughs> and the Womp people on the show and everyone associated with me. I'm trying to remember. Yeah, yeah okay, he's kind of... He's he's like a an orky pig bulldog thing. Can you link it in chat <laughs> so um, I can see what the hell you're talking about? So anyways, um... Kilowog. Kilowog. What? What is it? His name is Kilowog. Kilowog. W O G. Kilowog. Okay. Uh. Oh, that guy. Yeah, I don't know who yeah. the fuck that is. <laughs> well, he's not pink in like half the images I have here. So yeah, of them he's like a skin tone orange, but like his more recent incarnations have been this light pink color. I'm learning, nice. by the way, from our chat that we need to start. We need to bring issue zero back, but have Lady Ashlyn on because she knows more about comics than I do. <laughs> Which is really not saying much. <laughs> it doesn't take much at all. Sorry. I could bullshit better than almost anyone, and I have an absurd knowledge for shit I don't know about. But no, it really doesn't take so, much. So, um, let's see. Let's uh, let's take a look at our doc. Um, I want, let's talk about August games. August games. Well, uh, next week is Sonic Mania. Which, which I, I I've got Sonic Mania. Let me tell you, like in my spirit, I just can't. Right now, I cannot decide. <laughs> Right now, I can't. I just can't decide if I'm buying it digitally or, uh, or if I'm going to buy that stupid collector's edition. Go digitally. You don't need it. Mm-mm. I know I don't need it, but I found the collector's edition for like only ten bucks more than it is to buy it digitally. So where it's are you t- going to oh. put it? Ah, uh, exactly. you don't have an answer yet. You don't, don't get it. Don't get it. Let's see. This is my shelving unit for. Wait, you wait. don't have room. So that's that shelf. And then I have a Spider Gwen now. Yeah. yeah. And then there's those shelves over there. That's light. Wait, which direct? There we go. Yeah, no, I'm 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 pretty tapped out. <laughs> Space. 
I, that's, that's and then why I'm it, not it, buying it, collector's it, editions anymore, unless it's like super special to me. No, I'm, if it's not Mass Effect, Dragon Age, or Kingdom Hearts, I don't touch collector's editions anymore. That's, <laughs> well, that, we that's, won't be seeing Mass Effect anytime fucking soon. Not at this uh. point, no. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, so anyways, uh, yeah. Uh, so wait, I, 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 so I'm gonna pick up Sonic Mania. I, it, 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 if it's if it's 50% as good as it's looking, I'm cool with that. Just to have a Sonic game on my Switch, I, I'm happy for it just for the the soundtrack alone. They better mm-hmm. give me a damn music test. Yes. <laughs> Where do you rank on this, Justin? On the Sonic Mania, do you have the Mania? Well, the, the love, the, yeah, I probably do have the Mania. With the love they're putting into it, I could say to probably doing a music test. I feel like, yeah, they, they're going to do all the proper things. I feel like they're going to have all the fucking Easter eggs you could ever hope for. I think it'll be pretty cool. Do you think they'll do DLC? <sighs> like, you mean like level pack kind of DLC? Yeah. Um, I could see level packs. I could, I could see... Characters? If they were smart. So to my knowledge, you only play a Sonic in this, right? No, you have Sonic, Knuckles, and Tails. It's uh, like the full nine. So, it is Sonic, so it's essentially Sonic and Knuckles for a new generation. Yes. Okay, so I was going to say, because they could do something like that. So, um, I mean, they could bring in uh, other characters from the Sonic universe, you know, to be playable for... Because what I loved about Sonic and Knuckles was that you could put in previous games and then suddenly plays Knuckles in the previous levels. So I would love to see stuff like that, bring in original or new characters. Because doesn't uh, doesn't the Sonic Mania game also have a character creator? Mm, no, that's the... That's um, the Forces. That's the new one. Yeah, that's that, that's, that's the Sonic. next-gen one. Yeah, okay, Sonic cool. Generations or something. No, I think it's Sonic Forces, isn't it? Forces, maybe. I don't remember. That has uh, a character creator. Sonic Forces character. Yep, character creation. Sonic Forces. Yeah, and that like that scares me because of furries. <laughs> <laughs> I'm ex- I'm interested in it because of furries. <sighs> just because you know. I got. Just like to see me squirm. That's all it is. Pretty much, it's really all it is. Um, but yeah, Sonic Mania looks cool. I and my other game. It's funny. The only two games I'm really interested in for August are Switch games. It, it, you're not wrong. There's becoming no. more and more months where I'm just like, damn, it's a good month for Switch. It really it's got. Mm. Yeah. So because the, the the only other game I have on my definite buy list for August is Mario Plus Rabbids, yes. which uh, I guess <sighs> Achievement Hunter has a let's play of or a let's watch of that I haven't. I don't know if I want to watch it, but I don't know how I didn't realize it, but Mario, Mario plus Rabbits apparently has co-op. Really? Yeah, it has a co-op feature to it. Huh. I, 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 yeah, a local thing, so I, I don't know how that works. I'm really confused how that works, but because mm, for weird. a tactical RPG, but um, I'm going to figure it out because I'm officially going to bring the dock for the Switch in here because there's no reason for this in the living room, I finally decided. Mm, yeah, I I want to get it, but it's the week before Destiny Two shit hits. Mm. So I'm like, oh, can I, am I gonna be able to beat it in a week? Probably not. But again, I find I feel like the Switch is, uh, it's it. You get games on it. Like I'm nowhere. I, I I am nowhere near beating Breath of the Wild, but I still duck into it every now and again. So I feel like, but I feel like Sonic Mania will definitely be more of that game. And yep, I I Reaper made it back in. <laughs> haven't seen you in like 17 Once. years. <laughs> okay, 17 years. Let's go. 17, 17 years. years. 17 years. We traveled through time. Clout. It's a time traveling podcast. Yay, time travel. I'm a you're a bit early, dude. The podcast started and started 55 minutes ago. I was going to say he's a bit early. We're not popular yet. <laughs> he is early in that regard. <laughs> hey, when we're getting view botted and chat botted and whatnot, we're extremely popular. Oh god. So, uh, Justin, anything you're excited for? In August, uh, I bought Pat upon. You, you were streaming Pat-a-pon. it the I didn't other know night. It came out again. Yeah, it totally did. It came is out it, August first. Is it a new one or is it a re-release? It's a re-release of the first one. Oh, so it's all digital, I assume. Yeah. Hmm. No, I'm not. Uh, I'm not yeah, doing it. it looked interesting. Okay. On pawn Pat upon. No, you know no, you want to do it. No, I'm I'm tapped out. I I have Splatoon two. I am uh, I'm playing Fortnite and I'm I'm getting Sonic Mania in like two weeks. I'm good. Uh, yeah, I, I would agree on that. And I know what to do with it right now. Let's see uh, something else. Like I'm int- I want to see the scores on it, but Hellblade's coming out. Um, just to same people who did Heavenly Sword and uh, DMC. Hmm. Uh, that like I didn't know it was hitting this soon. Uh, that hits out th- actually tomorrow. Wow, that's the okay. recording of this podcast. Uh, what else they got? 
Mm. Oh, Night Trap, 25th anniversary. We all want that. Are you kidding me? How did I forget about that? No, and here's the one that everybody probably is forgetting about. Ages of Mayhem is coming out this month. Oh, yeah. I, I I am interested in it, but I I I only want to play it if I'm going to play with people, I think. Cause Why? Where? I don't think it's a co-op game. Um, Let's find out. This I'm looking. Uh, it's like This game is kind of horribly marketed. Yep, no, like... Vol- Vol- Volition's previous games have incorporated co-op agents of mayhem as a solo outing. Like You hmm. pick people to go in your squad, and I don't know, it's a weird thing. I'm going to go off on this one now. Yeah, that, that that's different than I expected. It's not on my list. It's actually funny, I have a bunch of stuff in August, and then I have nothing again until October, where there is a game coming up that uh, Reaper made a comment about in our chat. Uh, Shadow of War, the Mortal <laughs> game. Have you heard about the controversy? The latest one. Oh, yeah. It's, pay to win. it's, it's now. Well, so... they literally. Well, my favorite thing is okay. Fine, making that you could buy loot boxes to get items to make the game easier. Cool. It's the wording that's driving me insane because it's a choice thing. What What bothers me about this is the fact that they literally worded it as if you don't want to slog, you know, spend too much spend time playing the game and doing stuff, then you could level up and you skip all of these different features. It's like, wait. Wait. If I don't want to if I don't want to play the features that you've been touting and I want to skip them, I can do that. For what purpose? Yeah, like, like what's the- what's the actual purpose? Like, so you want me to skip playing your game to pl- what? I mean, is there is there a multiplayer component to it that would be beneficial to have no. really good gear to beat other people? No, no, and, it's it has nothing to do with that. It's literally just this. It's 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 just a way for them to make money. There is no logical rhyme or reason it, because the the wording of it was: if you don't want to take on all the nemesis stuff, you could do it to take on the story. It's like I okay, the story cannot possibly. Okay, it wouldn't take Hobby much to be better than the previous game, but I mean, like, I'm not playing this for the fucking Lord of the Rings storyline. I'm playing this for the Nemesis storyline. That's the because in- Shadow Mordor was a fun game, had good combat, but the only fucking reason you played that was for the Nemesis system to the point that I almost stopped playing it 70 hours in when the Nemesis system turned off for me, and it never turned back on. Um, I ended up playing the 10 hours li- to finish the storyline and some achievements, but it never turned on, and my game was permanently glitched for, like, the next two playthroughs I tried to start, it wouldn't turn back on. That's so I gave up on the game for a while. It, it was apparently a bug that... I dropped my phone. It's apparently a bug that has now been rectified. I've just never gone back to sort it out. Um, I may, I do actually want to stream the game, but, like, the Nemesis system is the only fucking reason to really truly play the game, and, I can't, and the Stronghold aspect is the big thing about this. I So I look at it right now as I was considering at one of their collector's editions, their digital ones that gave you the season pass and shit like that. Mm-hmm. If I pick up the game, I'm just getting a discount for the standard. I could give two shits. I'm not, yeah. because I'm just like, no, I'm not giving you more money. I'm just going to play the base game because now I don't trust you and I'm not pre-ordering it. I'm waiting for a fucking discount. Yeah. I, I'm, I, I'm out on that. <clears throat> I think that's where I'm um, at it, too. I want to play it, but, like, yeah. And this is no different from what EA used to do with their sports games. They're like, hey, pay, you can go ahead and get all your stats bumped up. It's just... But that is even a little less bothersome, because getting your because as someone who has tried to play uh, NBA games and stuff like that, it's fun the first season of trying to build up your character, you know? It, it, it's fun that first, but... The fact, but then it takes like ten seasons to actually have a character that's not sometimes dropping the ball for no goddamn reason, kind of situation. So like to do one or two seasons of playing and then to pay, I wouldn't personally, but to boost the stats so that I could really start taking part in like the Hall of Fame challenges and stuff, I could see that for for a sports game. But for a single player story driven game with this these kind of mechanics, why are you skipping content? It just makes no sense. I I really don't have an answer for that. No, I, I don't and expect anyone to have an answer. Apparently, they did it in um, Injustice Two as well. A fighting game also is a little less weird to me about doing it, uh, but but, but uh, from what yeah, I understand, doing... they have like gear and attribute bonuses in a fighting game. Yeah, yeah, they do. I don't know what to think of that. 
Yeah, there's a reason why I've not been really giving money to WB related games. Granted, the only reason I didn't pick up Injustice is because I know they're going to do a PC copy eventually. So that's the only reason I didn't pick that up. Like, also, I despise the first game. But I, I like the Nemesis system, which is the only reason I played the first one. But I mean, I don't care about Injustice. So what does WB have to get me to spend my money? Uh, th- whenever they eventually announce another Arkham game. True. True. Mad Max. Eh. Which is actually really good. Which I'm surprised that, that game like did perfect for Nemesis system. I well, think I mean, a lot like of games would work well with it, though. Haven't we kind of reached that point where it's just like, okay, so this could be good with Nemesis system. Like we've talked about it. a Batman game would be perfect for a Nemesis system. Um, most superhero games, even would work well. Spidey would work well for it as well. Anything with a strong rogues gallery um, and good replayable combat and action would work really well for it. I because we I know we did a topic on this once upon a time. I would love to see a mafia mob kind of game with a Nemesis system. Josh, I have one for you. What? A Turtles game with a Nemesis system that pulls from all the villains and crazy creatures they ever used. Ooh, so something where, like... We have to have a really solid combat system, which we haven't seen in a Turtles game in a long-ass time. So something that kind of where, like, the boss characters are your Bebops and Rocksteady's, your your Leatherhead, your 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 Sewer King, uh, uh, sorry, Rat King, and things like that. But, like... The, the but the, throwing shit at me. But yeah, but then there's like lieutenants and shit that those are like the nemeses, the ones that's like members of the Foot Clan and stuff yeah. like that, members of the Purple Dragons. Oh, that would make work it, well. Make it uh, a free roaming city too. Yeah, no, I think I'm I'm with Sows here uh, in chat here. That that's just a that, that's a dope concept. I've never said the word dope, dope. in that. <laughs> but no, you I'm made saying Josh like say dope. I you did make me say dope, but like no, seriously, I love the shit out of that. Because again, yeah, you could just take the higher level villains, and they, they're they're the same. They're your your gang leaders. They're stuff like that. Um, maybe maybe there's nemesis related stuff that changes their moves or stuff like that. Like how XCOM Two is adding uh, their 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 thing where you defeat people, and the way you defeat them changes up how stuff functions and works. Like that could work for the bosses, but yeah, then like the lieutenants and all that kind of stuff. Oh, I love this. I love 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 love. Ah. <laughs> uh, Oh. Uh, Sal's so, so thirty-two. Yeah, so I'm, <laughs> actually everyone's thirty-two or older here. So we're all yeah, we're I, all old men. I I'm twenty-one forever. I'm 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 twenty-five five ever. And thank you for the follow, by the way. <laughs> and anyone else yeah. I missed on follows, by the way, I forgot about. Uh, we don't usually announce that during podcasts because it's weird for audio listeners and for VOD. But I enjoy talking to people, so I couldn't. I can't help myself. Um, I Rebird made a comment here. Remake Godfather. Just use the Nemesis system again. A mafia style game, whether I want to play a mafia style game where you literally at the start of the game, you choose whether it's it's the Godfather, like a property or just mobs doesn't really matter I, where you choose. Are you going to be on law enforcement? Are you going to be in the mafia? And at any point you can switch sides because that's just how that era works. But there's a nemesis system. So you're taking on rival gangs, taking on cops, taking on crooked cops. I've got and they're title. all nemeses. I've got your title. What? Speakeasy. Oh, okay. <laughs> I feel that. I feel that. Oh, you could you could run booze. You could run guns. You could own nightclubs. Nightclubs. Yeah. I mean, uh, you know, just, just take the gameplay for some of the best gang games. You take a uh, gangsters like uh, financial property management. Take some of um of uh, Godfather 2's kind of uh, situation and world mapping kind of things. Bring in some of. Uh, like the mafia style, the visuals and storytelling, like just pull from a lot of these different mob games and then drop a nemesis system in there. Boom. With, te- make- with, with territory defense, obviously. Yeah. Well, absolute territory defense. I'm in. Okay. Who can I get money <laughs> to? Double dick games. Let's do it. Double dick Double, games. In Double association dick games. with teeny weeny productions. Uh, Ooh. did I mention I'm working on a teeny weeny shirt design? <laughs> <laughs> Please tell me it's just a bunch of little hot dogs. Uh, we have an idea. Chris pitched an idea to me that I really freaking okay. like. Um, is it yellow? I, I feel like it should be yellow. There is mustard involved. <laughs> there is definitely <laughs> mustard involved. A little squirt, kind of dribbling off the oh, end. Oh God! So yeah. Uh, um, would, uh, would I get in trouble for wearing this to my kid's school? 
<laughs> um, it's gonna be car- it's gonna be cartoony the way I'm looking at it. So you might get away with it. Then again, the only time I ever got detention in my life was junior of high school for wearing a shirt that I didn't actually realize was risque. My teacher figured it out. My mother didn't realize it. I even when I went into the office to get my shirt for the day, kind of thing, because you know they because you had to change your shirt. The uh, the the vice principal looked at my shirt, looked at the thing, and said. Uh, flat had stated that uh, uh, Mr. Uh, I can't remember. It was my history teacher in eleventh grade. He's like, yeah, he's he's getting old. You're fine. You could hang out here till the end of the class and just wear the shirt for the rest of the day. I doubt any other teacher is going to bother you. <laughs> and then I no showed the tension. Nice. Yeah, good old times. But that was that was a lifetime ago. Um, we've been wow, we've been going on for a fucking while now, and I am I am covered in sweat. <laughs> Just yeah, this if this light is fun. hot, dude. Bef- Justin, if you're actually, if we're gonna make this move thing fucking work, I gotta fix this vent here. If you're actually okay. gonna still considering it, because it pumps out no goddamn air, and then this stupid light here is we'll just out. that's a thing me. that's happened. <laughs> yeah, we 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 will. You're gonna do a temporary move at least for you know ten days. So yeah, it's a test run. Technically. It's, it's a, a test, test run. run. It's no, a beta. It's, it's 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 a beta test. <laughs> and beta we, test. we brought it full circle. Uh, <sighs> I wanted to talk about that. I was also excited for a chartered lost legacy, but other than that, yeah. Oh yeah, that's I, uh, I if need you have to actually finish the trilogy. I would re- uh, that would require me reinstalling it though. I got like seventy five percent of the freaking way through uh replaying the first game and I've still never played the second one. Or the third uh, one. You gotta get past the first game. I think the fourth one's still in plastic. I mean, I just have the... I, I <laughs> got uh, it on sale. I just have the bundle, uh, whatever, the the pack for the PS4 came with my PS4. Yeah. And I said get past the first game, because the first game's rough. I think I need to get a shelf, like, right here and put all my current games that I'm playing on it. Because I'm like... It, it, it overfill. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was do Brad, I was doing that for a while, but I stopped updating it. So like I have Grand Theft Auto 5 on the 360. I have Mass <laughs> Effect 3, Halo 4. Uh let's Dang. see what else. I got Fable Anniversary. Um, uh, I don't even know if I ever actually played that past like the first 10 minutes. Let's see here. I've got the original Infamous, Infamous 2, Crackdown 2. Jesus, man. Uh BioShock Infinite and Arkham Origins. Oh. Aside from the infamous games, those are all 360 games, to be clear. Okay. I don't even have a functioning 360 I, anymore. That's I how have, long those have sat up here. I have I, I have a question that I want to ask you, Josh. And this may need to be its own topic, but I'm going to go ahead and pose it. Okay. Is the idea of Rapture in Bioshock in any way related to the way Walt Disney ran things? Oh, absolutely. I mean, look... I've read up on Rapture. I've still never played Bioshock. No, no, it's fine. <laughs> but my knowledge of the universe, of the universe, and because I'm still obsessed with it, I just, I, I was a whiny little bitch who didn't have the confidence to play it and made Justin play a, the scary, game in front of me for a while. Um, that was the closest thing to a horror game I'd ever played at that point. <clears throat> so, uh, but no, my knowledge of it, I definitely, I mean, I definitely think a lot of that that game was uh, was based on that. I mean, that it's based on that whole that that whole school of thought and that kind of thinking, um, and it certainly has a theme park feel. And I think it's definitely a commentary in part about how that kind of utopian kind of thing it, it can devolve so well. At the very least, it's a commentary on Walt Disney's idea for Tomorrowland and Epcot Center, um, mm-hmm. and the idea of the the world of tomorrow, the pure world of tomorrow. You know, say what you will. I'm a huge fan of uh, of Disney movies. I'm a huge fan of the Disney parks, but there's no denying that Walt Disney was not a good person. I mean, with a lot of his views, yes, he brought a lot of joy to a lot of people's lives, but you can't deny well, all the stuff that's come out about him over over the, the decades. The the big thing that I've taken away from my initial bit of research and into the history of everything is like, by the time he was, you know, almost almost dead he, he and, and whatever um he had realized like look you know i'm not walt disney anymore whether he mm-hmm. was a good person or not he realized that what walt disney was was not the man he was anymore and i think that him realizing it makes him all the better for it 
despite like whatever controversies he may have in his life that I don't know about. Like the big things I've come all along right now is like he he smoked and he drank and he cursed. Um, there's probably well, more to it than that. Well, I mean, he was also allegedly a Nazi. I mean, so there's that whole history that he was anti-Semitic and a lot of other stuff that I have not researched in 20 – since I was like a 10 or 11 years old and what what made me start uh, liking Disney. But the, th- the simple fact of the matter is the way I looked at it and what my wife and I talked about was there's Walt Disney, the character – the guy we saw as part of movies and sort of plays and start, stuff like that. And then there's Walter Elias Disney, the actual entrepreneur, the, the guy. So I've divided that up into my brain. I have not done enough research in many years to know my opinion of Walter Disney, but Walt Disney is an important figure in my life all the same. Absolutely. And that's, that's kind of how, how I've looked at it. But there's no question that uh, who's the who's the guy who created Rapture and Bioshock? I'm spacing on the name. Uh, oh, Andrew Ryan. Andrew Ryan. So Andrew Ryan is definitely shades of Walt Disney. I mean, yeah. there's no question about that. Yep. So well, and, th- yeah. and and that ends this week of Brad and I trying to shoehorn Disney into every episode of the show <laughs> so that we can eventually get press passes to go to the opening of Star Wars Land. <laughs> I'm just coming out and saying it. I mean, <laughs> my people may as well know what what what, what our aim Yours is. Yours is opening first, by the way. Wait, what? Oh yeah, Yours no, is Disneyland opening is opening first. Yeah, but not by much. It's like going to be months apart, supposedly. Supposedly, based on timing, yeah. Uh, was it Galaxy? Galaxy's Edge. Galaxy's Edge, yeah, is opening first in Disneyland and then Disney World. And I I didn't confirm it until recently, but they are supposed to be exact replicas, so. Yeah, I know. I've heard that it's not going to be a case of, like, a lot of the stuff at Disney. I think they, because they want to make sure people go to both parks. I, I, I've heard, because of the amount of space, the reason why they ripped up so much space at Disneyland was because they wanted to make sure that they matched up. Hmm. So, that'll be interesting. Um... <laughs> But yeah, we're getting we're we're over time. I think we're over time. Um, we're over time. We are yep. an hour and fifteen minutes on Audacity. So, uh, you guys have anything else you want to toss out before we run out of here this week? No, I mean, yeah, I I've enjoyed chatting with you guys. I've enjoyed chatting with the audience. I th- I've uh, sadly I've already sobered up. Uh, I think I'm gonna make drinking a beer part of the podcast. If as long as my kid stays asleep, that's really all that matters to me. <laughs> with uh, it's the only reason I stopped drinking on the show was because I wanted to be a damn it, you know, a good parent. Uh, <laughs> my camera is pissing me off today. I'm just yeah. Your like camera's not staying stable. Times. Um, problem with this goddamn green screen is I can't sit still. <laughs> but it's a great advertising for the web round. Go to the webround.com. We're not. They're not our sponsors yet. Ooh, one can hope. So one can hope one day. So anyways, ah, yeah, I can't think of anything else. Um, yeah, no, I, th- I, th- I think that that that's that. Do that, we that's have it. any guests coming this month? Yeah, this month at some point, I'm trying to figure out a date because there is literally like two options next week or the 21st. I'm trying to get the Geeks Who Eat on the show. They are these really cool local people that actually I won their contest is how I saw Spider-Man early. Ah. Um, but they're really awesome people. They uh, they they make up recipes based on geeky topics. They also have Geeks Who Travel. They go to Disney a lot. Um, <laughs> they are, yeah, Lady Ashley knows them. They are awesome people. Uh, Sarah's a phenomenal person. Um, I'm trying to convince them. They've been wanting to do a cooking show on their channel, but they don't have the space in their kitchen. I'm trying to convince them to do a collaborative thing where my wife and I and them put together a cooking show for constantly calibrating with their promotion or thereabouts or whatever i want to make a cooking show with them because i will really want to make a cooking show i just want to eat yeah i, I just want to <laughs> eat food too charnel was going to make these uh cinnamon buns over the weekend when i say cinnamon buns apparently it's a cinnamon bun cake it's a par- like that big diameter for people uh, who are listening oh. it's like a fucking like two foot diameter oh, so uh cinnamon bun so it's almost as big as a disney cinnamon roll <laughs> Oh, almost, but, you know, it also is completely edible versus you kind of regret your life choices by the middle. Uh, I'm going also, back the Disney in November. <laughs> yeah, you're going back in November. I hate you so much. Um, you know, Charnel's not going to listen to this podcast, and hopefully she's not at the door. I may be crashing her, her birthday trip, so. Ooh. I have an idea stuck in my head that I'm fixated on as long as the girls are in her choir. She's going to choir trip that happens to be on her birthday. 
So I'm fixated on the idea of, uh, that as long as require friends sign off on it to drive to leave my house at about two o'clock in the morning, drive to California, get to the park at opening, and just be sitting on a bench somewhere. It, it's cute. It it's cute, cute and creepy, me. which is my thing. You know, my wife hates surprises, but I feel like that's one I would get away with and still be allowed to, you know, have <laughs> she relations. Would probably just keep walking and not even. <laughs> It's my it's my wife. We all know that she would walk right fucking past, right fucking past me without a, a simple thought. The joke my brother-in-law came up with is like, God, it's too bad you don't know someone who works at Disney because it'd be so cool if you could just pretend to be a ride operator or something like that. Yeah, and, you'll be on a Jungle Cruise. Well, I'm Jungle Cruise. Like I was thinking like Space Mountain, like at the base of the ramp where it's like, you know, where it's like how many in your party? I would do that as long as I was wearing a similar enough outfit. She would not see me. Not a chance in fucking hell would she notice me. And that would make it so great. But anyways, um, let's get yeah. out of here. <laughs> I'm trying to think. But anyways, as far as guests go, that's about it. Um, All right. I, I I think that's about it. Let's let's hope something happens there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, might have more guests coming up on the mental health breakdown. Uh, so, which uh, took a week, it took a mental health day last week, but um, Fridays at 5 p.m. Pacific, 8 p.m. Eastern. Oh, I'm not sure if that's sad or ironic. My dad was in town. I needed a fucking rest. <laughs> right. Uh, uh, I needed a breather. <laughs> so how do day. I end the show again? I forgot. <laughs> um, we got Twitch shows coming up. We're we're gonna be announcing more uh more shows and more content for Twitch soon. Otherwise, uh, Brad, I believe you read the bottom of the window and tell people where they can <laughs> find us. I don't have the window open. So uh, thank you all for joining us this week, be it live or the recorded versions of the podcast or video cast. Uh, you can find us every Monday evening, for the most part. We had a, a couple rough weeks at 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Pacific here on twitch.tv slash constant calibrating. Uh, Ooh, Fantasmic like look- opened again. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> if you'd like to look up any of our past content, uh, you can look up all of our videos on youtube.com slash concalpod. Uh, of course, we have our website. It really needs some updating. We've come to this conclusion. <laughs> Fucking uh, hell, it needs. It's calibrating. It's, it's, of course, yeah. we have our our main Twitter at ConCalPod, and you can reach any of us individually. Uh, I am at OG Zenos. Josh is at Bear Punch. Justin is at The Aging Gamer. Mm. Um, so, and I think it's just going to be us for a couple weeks. Um, might bring some get ge- might bring some special guests. Yeah, on. we might bring just... some guests in. Hopefully, <clears throat> excuse me. And I don't think I'm forgetting any of our stuff. Oh, we're on Facebook. Yeah, love us, like us there, follow us. But not yeah. too closely, because we uh, might get paranoid. I don't know. I keep all my shit public on Facebook at this <laughs> fucking point. So, like, pretty much, yeah. I, I, I. When you when you have a wife who you get into a conversation with, and she halfway through conversations like, "I will fucking kill you if you post this on Facebook and Twitter." Those yeah. are the best ones to post. Don't you know that? I usually reword them and post them anyways. <laughs> and and half the damn time is anyone who follows me knows I will then you know if it's a quote of a conversation I will then quote her as saying please don't post this now as long as it's not super personal uh, or something I literally am not supposed to I I don't believe I don't believe in privacy <laughs> anymore in my life in my All old right. age uh, how's that connect treating you uh, do I still have, I, you know, uh, our connect, uh, shuts off randomly for no fucking reason. So, so I don't even know. And it, it, it it's, uh, Roran likes, used to like to lick it. So I don't know if it works anymore. Okay. When he was a, like a little itty bitty thing and it was first learning to stand and, you know, kids taste random shit. Yes, they do. Hopefully not shit. Cat box. <sighs> <sighs> Can we sign off now? <laughs> We thank you all for joining us, and until next week, we bid you good sign-off. Bye. (laughs) 